Greetings and welcome to another message from God's Word. Today is the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, and our general theme for this Sunday is that our gracious God is with us through all the storms of life. And my message will be from Mark's Gospel about Jesus calming the storm. And behind me you see the beginning of, of that message, at least the part where Jesus comfortably sleeping, knowing that everything was going to be fine while his disciples were scurrying about in fear. So we'll talk about that today. Let's begin, though, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with true hearts and confess our sins to God, our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of him whose mercy shines upon us, dear fellow children of God. When you think through the do's and don'ts of the Bible, I'm guessing that one or more of the following come to mind. Uh, do not lie, do not murder, do not steal, or do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Love your enemies, love your neighbors yourself, and on and on. Now, all of these certainly are biblical and applicable today, but surprisingly, none of them are repeated all that often, and none of them come close to the repetition of the most popular command in the Bible, do not be afraid. That's right, do not be afraid appears in the NIV translation of the Bible 70 times. This doesn't include variants such as, as fear not or do not fear and the like. Add those all together and you have over 300 times uh, that admonition of not being afraid. Now, this, this does not mean that there is nothing frightening in this world. Let's be real. Life can be scary. But that doesn't mean that we need to be afraid of it. Nor should we fear the end of life, as many do. Throughout history, many have shown just how afraid they were of death. For example, Louis XV of France. He ordered that death was never to be spoken of in his presence. Stalin was so afraid of being poisoned or killed that he had eight bedrooms that could be locked up and like kind of like safes in a bank and on any given night nobody knew in which of these bedrooms he was sleeping or abdul hamid ii who happened to be the sultan of turkey from 1876 to 1909 was so afraid of being killed he installed alarm systems and trap doors and, and mirrors set at various angles throughout his palace and then he set up life-sized models of himself standing at the window sitting in a chair or reclining on a couch, hoping that they would receive any knives or bullets intended for him. Yes, people throughout history have lived in fear of, of things in this life and of things at the end of this life. But you, as a Christian, know that no matter how scary life and death may seem, there really is nothing to fear. That's because Jesus says to you, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid when God tests your faith. Do not be afraid then because it's God strengthening your faith. 
We find Jesus busy as usual, preaching, teaching, healing the sick, the demon possessed, and certainly provided abundant proof that he was indeed true God, but he was also true man. And you can one ex, you could expect that he was exhausted after yet another full day of work. He needed a break, time away from the crowds. And the Sea of Galilee offered that opportunity for him and his disciples. We're in Mark chapter 4. We're picking up in verse 35. That day, when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go to, over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. Little time away, boat trip planned, and they were off, looking forward to a relaxing ride across the lake. Yet Jesus had a test in store for his disciples. You know, they say that sudden storms certainly are common on the plains of Kansas. If you've lived here, you know how that can be, but they're even more frequent on the Sea of Galilee. They drop down over high hills surrounding the lake, and one such storm happened to pop up that evening. It's described as a furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so it was nearly swamped. This pleasure ride of the disciples well, now it turned into a battle for survival. And we know that at least four of those disciples had made their living as fishermen, so we might think that they had faced their share of turmoil out on the, on the water. But this storm must have been a bit more severe than usual because we see the disciples in a bit of a panic, even though it didn't seem to bother Jesus one bit. We're told Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion, the picture behind me showing that. But the disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Oh, these disciples, they feared for their lives. Well, Jesus slept. So there you have it, the key to a perfect night's sleep, complete trust in God. Not sure you're going to find it on this side of heaven, but if you leave everything in God's hands, why wouldn't you sleep like a baby? There was no such rest for the disciples, though we must have forgotten all the miraculous displays of power that they had seen from Jesus. In which he proved time after time that, that he was more than just a mere man. But at this time, the disciples allowed the storm to become greater than their savior. Their fear was greater than their trust. It was only as a last resort they did finally turn to Jesus. Now, we know Jesus didn't have any experience as a sailor. He, at least we're not told of any. He was simply a son of a carpenter. And yet the disciples did eventually seek him out for help. Is that a sign of faith? Well, perhaps it was that, that mustard seed of faith that we talked about last week. But the words sound almost like more of a rebuke than a confident plea for help. Teacher, don't you care if we drown? And yet they did finally turn to him. Oh, do we do much better when our faith is tested by the storms of life? Is in our first instinct, may, instinct maybe the same to try and to fix things, to handle things, to work through our problems by ourselves? And don't we often treat God as kind of a safety net, someone who's who's there for us only in cases, cases of emergency after we've tried everything else first? And that's when we find it also so easy to be like the disciples and to accuse God of not caring. The problems, they start piling up on us. The little breezes turned into gusting winds. The waves began to overwhelm us. And all of a sudden, things are spiraling out of control. Instead of listening to scripture, it says, cast all your anxiety on him. Like the disciples, we turned and said, where are you when we need you, Lord? When our faith is tested, we're tempted to think that we're strong enough to get through it on our own. But thankfully, there's still that spark of faith, right? That's in our hearts that directs us finally to our Savior. And just like the disciples, we turn to him. But sadly, often only after we've over, been overcome by fear and despair. There's really no need for us to delay when our faith is tested, because the more sanctified we become through word and sacrament, the easier it will be for us to trust God for help without any hesitation. Jesus says to each of us, do not be afraid. And he assures us that the tests he does allow under our lives are going to serve a good purpose. They're meant to strengthen our faith. Even then, Scripture tells us God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. 
but he's always going to provide a way out for you. Jesus didn't give his disciples more than they could handle on that stormy evening, because once they finally turned to him, he showed them that it was a wise decision. Picking it up in verse 40, Jesus got up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. And then the wind died down and it was completely calm. Our Savior has power over nature. And only the true God can claim that. Others have tried to make that claim. History records how the Persian king Xerxes once ordered that the sea be whipped and cursed. To, in order to allow his fleet to successfully attack Greece. But it was to no avail. The sea didn't come. Xerxes' fleet was lost. And Greece was saved. Only God has the power to calm the winds and the waves. Jesus calmed nature's storm that night. And he calmed the storm raging in the hearts of the disciples as well. Well, it was time for... Jesus to grade the test that he had given to the disciples, and they didn't do all that well. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? I picture Jesus looking at his disciples with the same look of disappointment he used in the outer courtyard on Peter after Peter had denied him. Faith was there. But it was so very weak. Jesus says, don't you have any faith? The disciples had no reason to fear because they had their Savior in the boat with them. Jesus rebuke was a loving call to the disciples to take a look at their faith, to repent of their sins, their lack of trust, and to instead put all their faith and trust in him as the very Son of God. Jesus tested their faith in order that he could strengthen it. He wanted them to know that they were safe with him and had no reason to be afraid. And the disciples, they certainly learned that lesson. But their immediate reaction? They were terrified. And they asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. It was scary how powerful this man was. But they knew who he was. They knew, they knew there was that they knew that there was only one who ruled over winds and waves. And there in the boat with them was the very Son of God, their Savior, the one who came to calm their greatest storm by paying, paying for their sins. Now there was no denying it. This was Jesus, the promised Messiah. Sometimes we forget who's in the boat with us, telling us, do not be afraid. Worry, despair. Grief, frustration, all come when we think we can navigate this sea of life on our own. But even though Jesus returned to heaven, he didn't leave our boat. He says, surely I'm with you always. He says, I'm going to see you through every test and temptation. Paul says, when you're tempted, he'll also provide that way out so that you can stand up under it. So when we face the tests he allows to come into our lives, we accept them, knowing what we're told in Hebrews chapter, tw in Hebrews chapter 12. The Lord discipline, disciplines those he loves. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as children, his children. This is how he keeps us close to him. God wants us to know that we can't live without him, that we won't make it in this world without our Savior at our side. And so we turn to him and to his promises in his word. We're strengthened in the, in the knowledge that we're never alone, that we have a God who gets our attention when needed, a God who knows what he's doing. You heard this passage many times, but you can never hear it enough that we know in all things God works for the good of those who love him. Yes, you're always safe with Jesus. You have no reason to fear. Martin Luther once preached a sermon on this text. Here's how he concluded his message. If you wish to be a Christian, you will certainly experience trials. However, if you call upon Christ in time of need, he will hear you rescue you, and cause your trial to bear blessed, bear blessed fruit and great glory. For the present, every necessity is met, and later, eternal life will follow. Just do not be afraid. Instead, call upon Christ for yourself, for your family, for your church, for our world. He promises to answer in his own good time. 
he is with us always, and he will not allow us to perish in the storm. One day, all the storms of life will end. The sea will be perfectly peaceful and calm forevermore. Until then, we can count on storms. Life will continue to be difficult. But through it all, Jesus tells us, do not be afraid. He cares enough to get into the boat with us. He is willing to die for us, to perish, so that we don't have to. And his answer to the disciples' question, don't you care? It's always yes. Jesus always cares. And that's all that matters. It's what gives us peace in the midst of any storm. Amen. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us now pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We thank you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wondrous works to the children of men. You hold power over wind and waves, sin and death. Deliver us from every trouble and distress and bring us at last to our eternal heaven. God of our salvation, you have ushered in the favorable time and day of salvation through the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Support all your ministers and remove all obstacles from hearing and believing the word they preach. Let your grace be proclaimed through every hardship, struggle, and suffering. Encourage us by the example of many saints to consider ourselves rich and alive, despite every opposition. For since we have Christ, we possess everything. Heavenly Father, open wide the hearts of Christians to one another, especially within the home and between neighbors. Let love be genuine, speech truthful, and patience constant. Let us commend ourselves in everything as those known by God's love and therefore unashamed to serve one another. Almighty God, you rule this world by your power. Give to our civil servants respect and recognition of your creation and its nature. When they use the authority given them from above, let it be in accord with your good design for our world and not the corruption of sins, which they are to rebuke for the good of their citizens. Mighty Lord, you command wind and wave out of your mercy, spare us from disaster, give success to crops, send suitable rain for the earth, Give protection to those endangered by storms on land, sea, or air. And give us faith both to call to you in trouble and to trust that you will work everything for our good for the sake of Christ. Gracious Father, you see that we are perishing, yet you bid us to set our fears aside and trust in you for the sake of Christ, by whose blood we have, we have received peace for our troubled consciences. Do not reject our prayers for their faithlessness, but Teach us to trust in you fully. Give your protection and peace to those in need. Hear us, Heavenly Father, for the sake of Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The line is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I pray that you have a blessed week, as I know you will, as you remain close to your Lord, no matter what storms of life you're going through right now or may come your way. I pray that the message from God's word assures you that our gracious God is always with us and we can hear him whispering to us over and over again, do not be afraid. He has everything under control. God, the blessings to you. Look forward to bringing you God's word again in the future. Take care, and again, have a blessed week.